welcome to AMAP View. I am Julia. Over the past few years, we have been talking regarding AR, augmented reality, VR, virtual reality, and MR, mixed reality. And in the coming years, we will speak more about XR. What is XR? XR is extended reality. From online research, we know it refers to all real and virtual combined environments and the human machine interactions generated by computer technology and wearables. XR encompasses all realities 360 degree video, augmented, virtual, mixed realities, and whatever other realities will be created in the future. Today, we are pleased to be joined by Eric Elder, who is the executive director of Game Wizards XR Lab and the founder of OW, Online Worlds Entertainment. Welcome, Eric. Tell us what Game Wizards XR Lab is. Yes, so um, we're creating a XR laboratory. Um, the uh, pilot lab is going to be at uh, Loyola Marymount University, where I'm a professor, uh, and we're planning on launching it this year. Cool. Uh, so what's your focus? Um, the focus is on creating a structure uh, which is the ultimate support for developers who want to make uh, great uh, AR and VR. So it's a production-based model. We're going to run 30-day uh, production cycles and provide the space, the, the computers, the hardware, um, the uh, production management, really anything the development team needs. So what solutions are you providing? Uh, the main solution is to be um, a real you know, space for creativity mm -hmm. and for design to happen. Mm -hmm. I think the most important thing that we could do in uh, XR as an industry right now mm -hmm. is research and development and training. So um, that's what we plan to provide with the laboratory. And the vision is mainly focused on training program. Well, um, training will definitely happen. Um, but we really, the reason why we're calling it a laboratory is because we really want it to be organic. So um, again, the vision is that um, you know a team comes in, or an individual comes in, and we form a team around them. Um, they have a project, they pitch it, uh, it gets approved. We really take a look at everything um, that the project is going to need, um, and then we bring in the support for that. So, like for instance, if um, the team needs a particular help with, say, um, optimizing their assets. Mm -hmm. Then we'll bring in um, a trainer or a specialist in that mm -hmm. and provide that, that information and that training for them. So we're really just looking to um, see what the teams need and whatever the gaps are and then fill those gaps with training if it's needed. Great. So I know at the same time, uh, you are also the founder and the president of OW Online. Yes. World. Yes. Entertainment. Yes. You have been in gaming industry for over 20 years. Yeah. So, from your experience, mm -hmm. how do you see the VR and AR games transforming the entertainment industry? Yeah, um, I think it's just, it's a natural progression. So, it's more about like the immersion, right? Mm -hmm. um, you know, we founded. Um, OW um, well, 11, 12 years ago now wow. to create virtual worlds for movie and TV IP, right? So um, we really- You were in virtual reality 11 years ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We were a little ahead of the curve, so <laughs> it's, it's nice to see that um, things are kind of catching up to the vision that we had. Um, there was around, you know, 2010 or so, there was a big kind of, um, a virtual world craze that was that was online, mm -hmm. but it wasn't virtual reality mm -hmm. yet. And there were a couple of different phases of virtual reality before this latest one. 
um, but it's all kind of leading us to, to the same place, which is really it's all about immersion, right? Mm -hmm. Like, um, you know, fans of say whatever, whether it be like Star Wars, Star Trek, Harry Potter, Marvel Cinematic Universe, um, you know, it's one thing to be a fan and looking at mm -hmm. the content on the screen, but really what um, the millennials and Generation Z want is they want to become completely immersed and they want to contribute in their own way to the story. They want to be their own characters. They want to go on their own adventures. Mm -hmm. And so that's where kind of technology is, is leading us now and um, in these different spaces. Uh, and, and one thing that we're really excited about and we've been looking at is actually combining augmented and virtual reality together. Mm -hmm. Um, to have a really unique experience. Hey, did you buy something from some gaming site? What do you mean? Yeah, look, there's a bunch of different charges on here. Do you think someone stole our credit card information? I don't know. That site sounds familiar, though. Yeah, isn't that the site that Billy's on all the time? <sighs> you don't think. Billy! Stop and think before you connect. Playing online is serious business. Visit dhs.gov slash stop, think, connect for tips on how to be safe online. XR is not a technology that can be implemented overnight. Right. It requires a certain amount of time, yeah. money, and mm -hmm. a highly skilled professionals. Yes. So I'm wondering, well, where these professionals come from? Yeah, well, um, again, that's, that's one of the the main reasons why we wanted to put the laboratory together. Again, I have a, a long uh, track record of training people to work in AAA game development. Mm -hmm. um, and and I'm, I'm looking at the, the space and there's a lot of, uh, you know, colleges, universities that are trying to put together mm -hmm. a uh, virtual reality. They, they're not even touching augmented reality for the most part yet, but a virtual reality like curriculum. Mm -hmm. um, the problem with that is that the space is moving so fast, by the time you get a curriculum put together and roll it out, mm -hmm. it's going to be outdated. And so that's why we're, we're um, focusing on the laboratory structure because it needs to be, it needs to have that flexibility mm -hmm. so that we can um, adjust our, our methods mm -hmm. and our training to whatever the latest and greatest um, kind of tools, uh, technology, methodologies come about. So you are the resource for those talented people. Yeah, absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. Um, you know, I think there's also um, a huge opportunity to train young people. I mean, I think gener Generation Z are virtual reality and augmented reality natives. Um, we're seeing some really fantastic examples of young people going into mm -hmm. VR with uh, creative applications and um, you know, learning it themselves are like self-directed learners mm -hmm. because they're just, um, they just take to it, right? So um, I think there's a way um, that we can harness that ability. Mm -hmm. um, and I think, again, it's more about creating guidance and mm -hmm. a space than the old model of education where you had an instructor in front of a classroom giving a lecture or teaching an individual skill. I think it's more about providing the tools and the environment mm -hmm. and then having, you know, young people explore and come up with their own, you know, solutions and, and, and be creative in that space. Mm -hmm. So according to your previous conversation, uh, you mentioned that you have been in this industry, AR, VR, yeah. and currently XR for 11 years. Yeah. So um, what applications are available for AR in business today? Um, well, I think, I think we're still figuring it out, right? I think the, I think the obvious, uh, one obvious um, application is, um, I'm sure mostly everyone has heard about Pokemon Go, right? Mm -hmm. So here's an augmented reality game that's really accessible because everybody had it on their phone and everybody's familiar with, with Pokemon as an IP. Mm -hmm. um, and so what some, um, now the, the game is geolocated, mm -hmm. so it maps on certain elements of the game to mm -hmm. real world locations. Mm -hmm. So um, what we saw start to happen, which is really interesting, is say there's a pizza shop or a coffee shop on an individual block. Cool. They will, cool. um, you know, uh, put a lure mm -hmm. to attract Pokemon there um, and uh, also attract, you know, potential customers because mm -hmm. they're 
you know, um, using their space to contribute to players' gameplay. So I think there's, there's all types of room to explore that further um, for business as far as like attracting, especially since, you know, a lot of consumer business is going online. Um, what brick and mortar stores and places like malls are really going to need to do is provide unique experiences um, for people and a reason for them to come out mm -hmm. um, that is immersive, that's, that's story driven, and, and also that appeals to you know, the, the next generation, which is the, the millennials and Generation Z who are, you know, for the most part, gamers. Eric, thank you so much for sharing your knowledge with us. And this is a map view. Thank you for watching. I am Julia. We will take a short break and be right back. You are watching a map view. I am Julia. We also invited Jen Olo, a business and a marketing strategist with nearly 20 years of experience in startups, co-op, channel marketing, and most recently XR. Welcome, Jen. Thank you for having me. Welcome, both of you. <laughs> Thank you. So, Jen, how do you see the market acceptance for these immersive technologies? Yeah, I think, um, you know, it, it can be challenging to educate and um, uh, brands and businesses about how they might use XR technology, um, but as they see more of it in use, mm -hmm. um, then they'll they'll be more accepting of it. And I think as a as a development community, it's our responsibility to provide that education, right? So we um, at Spatialist, the VR company that I work with uh, in architecture, we spend a lot of time talking to our clients about how they could use XR and and AR and um, you know and and how they can also get what they've always been doing in traditional media. So for instance, in architecture, somebody might pay to have 3D renderings created. Um, so with VR, you can create those rendering outputs. I mean, that's it's a no-brainer, right? But you can do so much more. So when a client says, I just want some still imagery, and I say, that's great. We can create that for you. Um, how about if we also um, take that property that you're selling that's a teardown and you know that's upwards of a million dollars in Los mm -hmm. Angeles mm -hmm. and we bring out some goggles and show potential buyers what their dream home might look like on that lot mm -hmm. and and they're like what what are you, what are you talking about <laughs> and um, I think it's up to us to really provide that type of education um, and uh, and then and we'll get there you know we just have to get the word out um, as a community so Eric, what do you think? What's your insight? Yeah, I mean, I think I think definitely we've seen um, some interesting things happen in real estate. Um, when I was at Legend, we had quite a few interesting projects, um, and I've definitely talked to some folks in the architectural space that that want to move more into to VR. Um, I think I think again to answer your question about adoption, I, I more and more what I think is going to happen is it's going to be um, uh, business to business, and it's going to happen inside of training, inside of corporate mm -hmm. training. Um, there's a couple startups that are doing this now, but if you think about the um, the personal computer, right, that's how adoption happened there, mm -hmm. right, yeah. and even cell phones to a certain degree, right? right. So, like people got used to using computers. Like when, when computers first came out, I was like, why would you ever need that for your for your house, right? Now everybody's got a computer in their pocket, right? Mm -hmm. So. Um, uh, I think people got used to using computers when they were at work and at school, and then it became, um, you know, make a lot more sense or, or really became like a necessity to have mm -hmm. it in the home. Mm -hmm. yeah. But I, I think it's also a matter of like, like, you know, I think we're saying kind of the same thing. It's like people getting used to it, right? Like a right. lot of people are still wrapping their heads around or becoming aware of VR, AR, let alone XR. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, I think over the next five to 10 years, it's just gonna gradually happen more and more. I think the other place where it's gonna happen is in, I think, amusement parks mm -hmm. and um, movie theaters, any, any place where people go out to have a good time. Mm -hmm. um, you know, they're gonna have an experience at an amusement park, and then they're gonna be like, oh, I want something like that at home. Like kind of like what happened with arcades. Like people got, you know, used to playing games, you know, out and dropping a coin in. And then once they really had that experience, then, you know, they wanted it at home. 
and the technology and the price points are just going to come come down and get mm -hmm. get more and more accessible. So. Right. Mm -hmm. So, Jan, as a marketing strategist, what do you think the most effective ways to promote and grow these XR companies? Um, I think that we have to share it. Mm -hmm. So, um, from um, being an early adopter of VR in architecture, mm -hmm. um, one of the first things that we started doing, because there wasn't a lot of documentation for how to do this stuff, we just started documenting it and sharing it and sharing it with the community and, and making it free and just saying, here's what we're doing, here's what's working, mm -hmm. here's what our clients are doing, here's what they're getting out of it. We actually have a clause in all of our contracts that is our confidentiality clause, mm -hmm. and it's basically nothing is confidential. We're able to share everything we do, including all of our planning meetings, because that's the type of community that we need to create to grow um, you know, VR and XR and, uh, and AR. Um, and so I think sharing it is huge. Um, and, and being willing to be a resource, you know. Uh, we use a um, software called Unreal Engine, mm -hmm. and um, they're busy making millions of dollars on their gaming, and we are this like, little tiny blip doing architecture using their software. Um, but the really cool thing is, is that because it's such a small space right now, we are able to um, reach out to them and make connections. They share what we're doing, you know, so we get exposure online. And um, and then I, I think it's going back to, from a B2C perspective, right, when you're reaching consumers, um, it's not so much about content. There's a lot of content. More and more content's going to come. Better content's going to come. It's about creating connections with people. So if you can create a connection, um, where, like you said, you have an experience in an amusement park, and you go, gosh, I really liked that. I want to get that at home. I want to get that more often. Um, those are the connections that we, as developers, have to make for those consumers. And then the demand goes up, mm -hmm. right? So um, one of the examples that I like to give um, is home builders who are building master plan communities. Right now, when you walk into their example home or whatever, um, you look at a bunch of tile samples and they're all like little two by two squares of granite or something. I don't know about you, but I would rather put on a pair of goggles and see exactly what my kitchen's going to look like mm -hmm. and, and use my controllers to change my granite and to change my flooring and then to say, oh my gosh, this is my house, you know, and it's all around you and it's so realistic now. I mean, you've been in this business for a long time. <laughs> Stuff has really changed. Um, and uh, it sure beats the heck out of looking at, you know, two by two tiles. And uh, as those home buyers, as those 15 year olds, 20 year olds, they're buying houses, they're going to start demanding that. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that's when brands are really going to have to kick it into gear. So if they want to get ahead of the game, they do it now. But some of them are going to take a little longer. Okay, so sharing and building the connections. I think these two main points that you just mentioned mm -hmm. as the most effective ways to promote themselves. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Jan. Thank you, Eric. Yeah, Thank welcome. you. Thank